Hello Aquarius, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Aquarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It's totally free, doesn't cost you anything. But if there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. All right. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aquarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And a Ten of Pentacles. This is what we've been waiting for, right? That is the picture of your best life. That is wealth, right? Well, let's see what the context is here. Now, with the Ten of Pentacles, I always like to ask, what does wealth mean to you? All right. So uh, if you're so inclined, leave your answers down in the comments. I want to hear from everybody. What is wealth? right? What is the picture of your best life, right? If you had to make a top 10 list of what you need in your life to consider your life to be happy and successful and the kind of perfect picture, what are some of the things that you need in life, right? What is the picture of your best life? I wish there was a way that we could share, you know, pictures and images because I would ask you all to draw a picture of your best life. What does it look like? Are you in that picture? Here's the Queen of Cups, right? Got some fire energy here, a little bit of air, more fire, a lot of fire here now. Now there's a lot of warmth, a lot of heat radiating in to this. Oh, a ten, look at, oh my gosh, this, <laughs> This feels like a prophecy to me now because we've got the Ten of Pentacles. We've got the Ten of Cups. This literally is the picture of your best, perfect, most happiest life uh, dreams come true. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Now's the time for me to lose my voice, right? When we're speaking of this wonderful energy. Ten and ten. I've got a tower in the environment. Five of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune. See, we thought it was going to be easy, right? But we've got that tower energy. So it's not its not going to be easy. Nothing, nothing worthwhile, nothing that brings you the tens here is going to be easy. It's not meant to be easy. All right. Let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is one random card from the Smith Weight Tarot that we will just... Uh, Let's see, maybe right there. We're going to put Alien Simon Mork Ripley right there on top. Our alien friend can guard that card for us. Right? But it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation that we need. Now, if at any point during the reading that little alien whispers the answer to you of what that card is, I want you to put your uh, prediction in the comments below. All right. Let me know what you think that card is. Let me know what the picture of your best, most picture-perfect, happy life is, okay? Um, but first, let's take a look at these energies again, because as far as major arcana go, we have only the tower and the wheel of fortune. It's kind of like things have to be torn down to be rebuilt. Progress only comes through growth, right? Uh, growth is this kind of uh, shedding the old skin of... Um, you know, becoming too big for the environment, then we've got to kind of break through. We need a larger, a larger environment, right? A, a larger worldview, a larger reach, um, higher goals, right? We got, we've got to set the bar even higher now. We have fire, fire, fire. We've got water and water. We've got some oh, we water here, of course. Don't forget that. Uh, we've got our air energy here, and of course we have our earth energy right here as kind of the, the central focus, right? So again, the ten, of, the ten of Pentacles, I think that you understand what wealth is. 
And that's why I want to hear from you. Um, you know what you need in life to be happy, to feel successful, right? When I say success, I don't just mean, oh, you're going to have, you're going to be rich, right? Maybe that's important to you, right? Um, but this is all sorts of things. And especially when we get over here to the Ten of Cups, it's the, the connections, it's family, it's spiritual growth, spiritual experience, right? It's love and affection, it's joy, it's happiness, it's all these different things. But what are the physical components of that? When we say joy and happiness and connection and love, how does that look for you, right? What is the picture of that? What does it look like? I think you're someone that knows that. And if you, if you aren't too sure, the Queen of Cups here is saying, you've got to search yourself. You've got to be emotionally transparent to yourself at least, right? So there's a lot of depth work here. There's a lot of understanding what we want. Allow your unconscious to kind of send you these signals, send you these symbols and, and images, right? When you ask yourself, what do I want in life, right? Don't try to figure it out mentally, right? We don't have a lot of air energy here. You've got to wait for these images to arise, almost in a meditation, almost in a dream, in a daydream, in a vision, in a, in a reverie. It's not really an intellectual exercise. Right? It's an intuitive, spiritual, emotional, symbolic kind of thing. But you have to be emotionally transparent. You have to be honest with yourself about what you want. Maybe we just want money. Maybe that is really the most important thing to us, and that's fine. That's good. We all need some of it, right? Maybe you really just want safety. Maybe you just really want, you know, a family, right? Warmth, love, right? Affection, intimacy, right? We've got to, we've got to be able to, we've got to be able to know what we want. And then the tower here is saying we've got to be able to express it, right? And the towers, that's going to be some interesting energy. Um, nothing you can't handle. Here's the five of wands up at the top of the path of the dove. You're somebody that is kind of ready for a challenge. You're ready to, to grow. You understand that growth comes through challenge, comes through getting outside of our comfort zone. Growth, spiritual growth, emotional growth comes from emotional transparency being honest with ourselves and perhaps with others too about what we want and what we need in life. It's your life. And you have to know what you want out of your life. What kind of life do you want? Five of Wands. Knowing um, the balance between striving and yielding. Right? This is a five of wands. It's very active. This is saying that you you know that you have to go out and get what you want. You know that nothing's going to just fall into your lap. It may seem that way. Because sometimes rewards come to you when you aren't expecting them. But I guarantee that you've done the karmic work to bring those rewards to your lap. Right, But in the moment, it's kind of an, a nice unexpected gift when things just kind of land in front of you. Um but you've done the work to get to get those rewards, those benefits. So the Ten of Pentacles to me is, is really a lot of things coming your way right now. And this is, where, this is where I'm kind of feeling this prophecy thing, especially with this Tower card. The Tower card is the, the revelation, right? The truth is coming out. Um, uh, karma is coming back around, right? Those karmic rewards are coming in. And so I think the Ten of Pentacles really is a lot of these things are coming to you seemingly out of the out of the blue right just just washing in from the ocean washing up on shore and you have to be able to recognize these things that are coming to you and in order to recognize them for what they are and to understand the the, the value of them you have to evaluate them right you have to know what things have value for you you need to know how you feel about things, right? 
So you've got to be in touch with your emotions so that you can assign a value to the things that are coming into your life. Because it will seem that they just drop right out of the blue. I wonder if the mystery card is going to be that page of cups, right? The fish and the percolator. We get that card a lot for Aquarius readings. These things that wash up on shore, you have to be able to look at it and evaluate it. How do you feel about it? Is it meant for you? Not just is it useful. That's kind of, that's what this card's about down here. The Knight of Swords. This is underneath everything. You're someone that you can easily see the usefulness of things, right? And that's, that's different than finding the value. You're someone that can look at anything and see how it can be used, right? And in that sort of way, it has a value, sure. Um, it has a usefulness, I guess, is kind of the way we're differentiating things here. And this is a very good skill to have because part of your karmic rewards, part of the work that you've done, is involving the, um, the way you have been making use of things, right? We look at the recent past here, and this is kind of the, this is the karmic cycle here, the Four of Wands. This is um, kind of completing one karmic cycle and on to the other. This is also the idea that, um, that everything we do, while it does have immediate results, right, you know, I immediate effects, um, you, you put something on the stove and it's going to get cooked, right? But it also has long-term effects. It also has future kind of karmic consequences, you know, that food is going to give you indigestion or this food is really, um, really healthy for you and it's, or it's loaded with chemicals or there are unseen consequences to our actions, right? And I like using the food analogies, of course, because I do these readings in the mornings and I'm very hungry. Now, um, <clears throat> you, you understand that things have their immediate effects, but then there's also a long-term kind of, you know, cycle to things. And that's something that you try to keep in mind. Now, it's very interesting that we've got the Four of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune. They look very similar. But one is very royal, very spiritual, purple and yellow. It's very, there's a lot of uh, spiritual energy in this card. And this one is really green and red and yellow, which to me has a more earthly, immediate, manifested um, aspect to it, right? This is kind of, you know, this is following through with our actions, right? Understanding the way karma works, cause and effect kind of thing. And this is understanding the larger cycles, the longer, larger implications of what we do. The more long-term consequences, right? So I think you're someone that is very much tuned into that. And I think this card represents all of the work that you've done in the past, all of the, you know, what we could call all the good deeds, right? If you want to look at it that way. All of the good deeds in the past, which while they do have their immediate, you know, consequences, they have more long-term consequences. And those are the consequences that are washing up on shore now. And so we have to be able to recognize these and see how we're kind of getting these blessings, these miracles, these, this abundance is coming into our life. We have to be able to see it. And we have, to, we have to know ourselves well enough um, not only to determine the usefulness of things, but to assess their more spiritual or emotional value. Okay. Now, moving to the Princess of Wands here. This is then taking these rewards, these blessings, these gifts, this wealth, and then asking the question, what are you going to do with them? Right? You get the, the picture of perfect life. You get this ten of pentacles. Let's say you get a million dollars. Right? The princess of wands is kind of the, this is the tarot, the, the spirit, the universe, asking what are you going to do with all that? Are you going to kind of go the Mike Tyson route, buy a tiger? Uh, adopt a tiger, I guess. Love Mike Tyson, by the way. Um, are you going to are you going to let it consume you? 
right? Are you going to be overwhelmed by it where we kind of lose our self, lose our direction a little bit? This is a very good problem to have. Um, we have to be wise in how we, we behave with all of this abundance, with this best life scenario, with this when the picture of your best life becomes a reality, um, it, it's going to really spark this kind of enthusiasm in you. We're going to feel like just kind of going wild with it. You know, a lot of excitement here with this card. Um, this is also the card that says you've got to take some risks. You know, um, this isn't a financial reading. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not qualified to give any kind of financial advice. But this is the energy that says, hey, you've got this lump sum of money. You might have to do some rather aggressive investing, you know. And this is kind of like having enough abundance that you can be a little aggressive with some of it. This is kind of a risk-taking card, you know. Also understanding the immediate consequences and understanding the long-term effects. This is the idea of um, investing in something now that you know is probably going to lose money tomorrow. But in 10 years, it's going to be a wheel of fortune, right? It's going to be, it's going to just kind of be even greater than what you started with. This is some of that um, aggressive risk taking. And it's not meant to be financial, but this is kind of, um, you know, what is coming next for you? Right? Because we get to attend, we get all this good stuff washing up on shore, well, then we have all of this good stuff, but what do we do next? Right? If this is the end of the road, well, that's going to get boring quick. This is going to lose its luster very quick. So we need to find out kind of what we want to do with our lives now. And it might be in need of some experimentation. We might have to go do things that make us uncomfortable. Go find ways to grow, to continue to grow, to push this goalpost back a little bit so we have something else to strive for, you know. Let's move to the path of the serpent now. And as I do this, I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. It doesn't cost you anything. It's totally free. Leave a comment for me, too. I, I love reading the comments from all of you. I appreciate all of you. Okay, so ten of cups, kind of on the same, kind of in the same boat that we were over here. We have very much the same cards, right? We've got the tens, you know. We've got the fulfillment of our of our goals and aspirations, right? Completion of the, um, you know, of what we uh, set out to accomplish. We got the tens. We've got the fire energy showing that something needs to come next that we have to have an even fire over here, showing that we have to then transcend what we've achieved. There has to be more. We have to continue doing the work and making this wheel go round, right? We can't just suddenly drop out of the world and disengage from life. We have to stay engaged, right? Because even, even not acting is creating more karma for us. So we might as well focus on doing the right things, doing positive things, so that this karma can be as rewarding as possible and more good stuff can wash up on shore, right? We've got the Five of Cups. We've got the water energy here and here, too. These are kind of mirror images. Now, the Five of Cups is talking about what we don't want. And maybe... Maybe the five and the ten here are important. Right? We kind of had a five and a ten on this side too, even though it's it's wands and pentacles, and over here it's both cups. But the ten of cups maybe is saying that the picture perfect life, your ideal happiness, must remain a state that is just a little bit out of reach. Right? If you would achieve your ideal happy life, it's no longer the ideal, it's the actual, right? Calling it the ideal puts it 
a little bit out there, something that we have to continue to reach for. And we're reaching on the path of the dove with this creative fire energy, looking to challenge ourselves, looking to grow, looking to say, okay, I've got a million dollars, now I want two. You know, there's milestones, there's signposts along the way. There are incremental goals and there are the long-term goals, right? And here we've, we're talking about it with the earth energy, but emotionally, spiritually speaking, kind of the same way. We achieve a really happy state. Okay, now we've got to push this goalpost out a little bit and see what do I got to do next? You know, and the tower, yeah, the tower is a little bit, a little bit severe. But I think this is the emotional breakthrough that we need. We see kind of like a physical breakthrough here, you know, with the success and the achievements. And then there's this emotional breakthrough where maybe we are tapping into the deep, deep waters of this Queen of Cups to understand what we really want. Maybe all this is physical success. Well, yeah, we like it. It's good, but there's something deeper that you want. And this is a revelation of that. This is the kind of emotional breakthrough that is just like a eureka, like an aha moment. You know what life is all about now. You've seen it. Your third eye is open and your mouth is open. You are speaking the prophecy. This is a full spiritual activation. This is a kundalini experience. This is um, full chakra activation here. This is really the, the, uh, a breakthrough, and it, fi it feels rather sudden. So it is kind of like that aha moment, like you've struck gold. Not only physical gold, but the spiritual gold too. I wonder if the mystery card's gonna be that sun card. And on the other side of this, we've got the Five of Cups. Now, the Five of Cups is interesting as the card that we don't want. Because in some ways, this is, well, we started with a Ten of Cups. Now, we're, now we've got a Five. Well, we're, we missed out. We lost Cups, right? We lost some water here. So we don't want that. You know, our, our human personality, we don't want disappointment. We don't want to lose our cup. We don't want to fall from this ideal state of perfect happiness. But at the same time, we need this. We need negative and positive. We need the duality of this human world so that we can strive for perfect happiness, so that we can feel the perfect happiness. It's what I say, if you become sugar, you can no longer taste sugar. And you know what? Sometimes when you taste something sour, it makes the sugar taste so much better, right? Makes the sweet a lot sweeter. And that I think is what you're doing in the immediate world. That's why this car, we don't want it, but we need it. Um, sometimes we need what we don't want, right? We need that balance. And it's all about this wheel of fortune at the end. The way that your life is expanding, your consciousness is, ex is expanding, and we're constantly reaping the karmic rewards for actions and decisions and choices in the past. And then actions, choices, and decisions right now are affecting our future karma. So it's always this kind of interaction between the present moment and the kind of infinite future. Yeah. So at the same time, we are reaping our karma and creating it. And it's all about how we deal with that. So this is kind of like, you're getting a lot of success. All of this good stuff is washing up on shore for you because of past karma. But how you deal with all of this success and this love and this happiness and all of these gifts and blessings and these rewards, how you deal with those is creating your future karma, tomorrow's karma, right? I didn't mean for this to be a reading about karma, but I feel like a lot of good things are coming into your life, you know, and I feel like you really, you need to, um, you need to do that work of evaluating these things that are coming in. So you know how to utilize them, right? In a way that is going to be good for right now and then also good for the future. Well, let's look at the mystery card now. I, I wonder if this is going to be the sun card. I, I hope that it is. It's kind of, it'll be the physical gold and the spiritual gold. And then we've got above and below. 
and it would be rather perfect. Um, I would take another Wheel of Fortune. I would take the star energy, obviously, your, your power card. Um, <clears throat> if you have a prediction, put your answer in the comments below. All right. And I still want to hear, what is your idea of the best life? Right? Perfect happiness, perfect wealth. What does that mean? All right. Um, star, Wheel of Fortune, or the sun. I'm really thinking big here today. Oh. I don't like that one at all. It's a five of wands. See, sometimes, sometimes I'm wrong. Um, so we've got a lot of five and five, and five is even the number of Mars, right? And Mars is the tower. So we've got a lot of this kind of struggle, friction, right? Um, you know, it's through friction that you can build a fire. Right? It's through challenges that we grow. It's through struggles that we can evolve. Um, this is kind of, a, kind of a shedding skin kind of thing. You know, it's this idea of we are, we're constantly, I think, in life. Um, it's through the interaction of the four and the five that all of these, you know, these rewards are created. So it is through conscious activity. The fire energy is all about your consciousness, your awareness, your focus, right? Your will. Having your eyes open, right? Eye, your eye open and speaking the truth, right? Being real with yourself and with the world. A lot of fire here today. And um, especially with the five of wands in the Rider Waite Smith deck, um, this is more of like sport fighting, or more like training. You know, it's not really about like fighting with other people, but it's the practice, right? It's the training. It's the kind of um, the drills, right? And this might be that kind of um, friendly fighting that really allows us to grow in our skill, right? In, un in our awareness. So I don't think these fives are about struggle necessarily, not like not literal struggles. Um, but keeping yourself in, uh, in good shape, right? Uh, staying up on your techniques, staying up on your skills to maintain awareness, to be able to always take this four and keep the wheel turning, right? The five is what spins the wheel. It's the energy that forces change into the system and keeps things rolling. You gotta stay frosty, you know? And with all these fives, I still I wonder if maybe you do have a background in military or law enforcement or something that kind of um, that requires you to stay on top of your skill set, you know, in a very practical way. Um, but I, I think this is good in terms of us um, always being ready to break through limitations, always being ready to strive to push the goalpost out a little bit so that we've got more more room for progress, right? Um, we don't want the fit. We don't want to cross the finish line necessarily. We want to push it out a few yards, so we can have another down. Yeah, we can have another play. And that's what I feel too. This kind of competition, but it's a it's a sport competition. It's not. Um, it's not like the dog eat dog kind of competition. It's it's a kind of a friendly game, you know, football or something. I'm not really into sports, but I love the, um, I love the idea of sport, you know. I don't watch sports though. Uh, too busy, I guess. Anyway, we're going to do an extended reading as well. If you want to stick around, click on the link up here in the corner that will give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Aquarius, but for every sign, right? You can cross-watch, check your other placements. Um, I'm here on air every day at 6 a.m. Chicago time, so I hope you'll come back and see me again tomorrow. Um, I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. Again, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything. Totally free. All right. And it helps out the channel anyway. Uh, thank you. And I love you. And we're all in this together.